Hey everybody, Sean here. Um, a week ago, uh, me, me and the PSI crew, we all, uh, we all went out to Roseville, Ohio, to uh, check out this uh, this abandoned prison out there. Um, little brief history on it. It was built around the '40s and um, closed on closed on in the early, in the early '60s. It was uh, one of the it was one of the two sat one of the two satellite prisons for Columbus, Ohio's bigger pen penitentiary, basically, if any good prisoners were too good, instead of letting them out of jail, they put them into the smaller uh, correctional facilities, Roseville being one of them, and what was even more funnier, which I, well, I thought was more ironic, was that the, was that the um, prison itself, all the bricks were made by inmates from, uh, from, from the main Columbus prisons, so basically they built themselves their own jail. Now, as for the investigation itself, as of my thoughts, um, we got there around six, seven o'clock in the evening. It it was it was still really bright out, so so we were able to get a lot of good shots before anything. But um, from the other video, the place was basically just all all lock and pad. But there were some spots in there which you can tell, you know, pe people you know just broke in. Basically, on some of the on some of the bottom windows, even when we were inside of it to actually look around, um, the, the guy who, who let us in, his name was Keith, really nice guy. He actually showed us one of the windows where some where some people were breaking in because they were able to move some old couch in front of it, so they had some kind of you know leverage to get get in and out. But you know, I don't know why people have to resort to things like that. If it's private property, stay out of it. You have no right to be in there, and if you get caught, your ass is probably going to go to that prison. <laughs> but, um, but my thoughts about it, um, when we first got there, I thought it was amazing. J just to stand in front of it and look up at this towering beast of bricks and metal, I was, I was actually impressed. I mean, I just loved every minute of it. But even though after we got done poking, poking around and find, finding out there, there was really no way in, we were actually just about to pack everything up, and we noticed this guy, the, the man who took us on, onto the tour, off to the side staring at us, just basically poking around and watching us. So, me, being the idiot that I am, I said, well, I ain't going for that. I'm going to record him, and I started recording him. But then um, one of my other members, Tina, she uh, she was actually ballsy enough <laughs> that, than all of us, and she went over and started talking to him. Then we all got into the conversation, and he was a really nice guy. Now he he explained to us that the prison was now owned by a private property for over two years, and they they have had a lot of trouble with break-ins, which you know really upsets me because I mean we're we're basically a starting paranormal group and when we hear of other groups breaking the law you know that just makes everyone else look bad so you know if it's private property just stay out but at, but after we, t we told him about, about our little adventure there he was more more than kind enough to just show us around so he got his keys and we went through the front gate now as we walked in there we walked what looked at, what looked like to be their garage now but that was actually the mess hall where all the inmates would eat so it, it was pretty was pretty big, but after we got out of there, we went into a little hallway that connected to to the taller part of the building. And I was wrong; I just thought it was something else. But that's actually where all the inmates stayed. There were about four floors. Each floor housed at least a hundred a hundred guys, just hundred just a hundred dudes with a couple of bunk beds and one bathroom per floor. Not a pretty sight. I. I don't know how anybody could really, you know, live in something like that, but, well, hey, you know, you do the crime, you do the time. It's, ba it's basically all, all it is to it, but enough of that rambling. Um, my, my impressions of the place, you know, I, I didn't get any weird vibes, spooky feelings, you know, a anything like that. I mean, I usually get, like, a couple weird gut feelings every now and then, but with this prison, it was basically, you know, just a prison. It was, you know, it an old building, so, but I, but I did love j just to be in there and just looking around at all the stuff, you know, I mean, I, I just love doing adventurous stuff like that, um,
But as we got higher up into the floors, um, I I started you know wa wondering about some about some of the reports there about how some paranormal about how how some paranormal groups go there and they get a fe they get sick feelings they you know they feel sick and things like that. Now normally, well I don't know if you want to call it normally, but normally with um, supernatural events. Um, mainly negative energy, malevolent spirits, you know, they, they, they can impose this energy onto you, so one, one of my beliefs is that it makes you sick, or uneasy, or, or discomfort. Now, that, that, would be a good, that would be a good notion to go by, since this was a prison housed with a lot of people who weren't very nice. But the more we got to look around in there, I noticed that all the paint from the ceilings and stuff were coming off, I mean, this stuff was just dripping off. It, it looked like stalagmites or something in a cave. And it was dripping down so much that it was dip, dripping on the ground and piling up on the ground like this. And that, that paint's been there for probably 50 plus years, just like the prison. So I'm pretty sure if anybody really got sick in there, they were probably getting sick of the lead paint. Or it, was pretty, it was pretty much that set, that uh, lead paint. I mean, if you're—I mean, it's all chemicals. I mean, if you're exposed to it long enough, of course you're going to get sick. Why certain people don't get sick at certain times? I don't know, but I believe that that is one of the one of the little supernatural things that have been going on there. Is people are getting sick of lead, getting sick by by the lead paint, especially a f a few that I've been reading that some people would go there con constantly. Like every other time they get there, it gets worse and worse. Well, that kind of makes sense with you know more paint builds up around the place, more nastiness, so you're going to get sick. Um, but other than that, um, you know, we, we were able to see the hole and all this other cool stuff in there, and that was about it. Um, after a while, uh, we, we actually had to leave because the owner himself wasn't too keen on, keen on us being in there, but they were still nice, n nice nonetheless. The prison, like I said, was just basically an old building. I mean, it, it probably would have been a lot funner to do it like at night when it was dark. But I feel just the experience and the privilege that, that was given to us to go in there was more than enough. And I would like to say this again because I promised that I would kind of get the word out here. This place has been privately owned for two years. Two whole years privately owned. And they are getting really tired of people breaking in and, you know, trying to be adventurous. I mean, I'm all for adventure and shit like that, but... Like, I just got done ranting a few seconds ago. Private property, stay out. Seriously, you're making the rest of us look bad. And, you know, that's basically it. Well, that's basically my, my thoughts. So... Until next time, dudes.